Hey guys, Visual Effects Bro here with a tutorial in After Effects. What we're going to be doing today is taking Twixter and using it to make super slow motion footage in After Effects. We're going to go ahead and start with a new project. Now we shot this all on the Canon 7D which shoots at 60 frames per second. We're going to be taking that 60 frames per second and turning it into 1500 frames per second. Let's go ahead and import the footage. Uh, when you shoot this, you're going to want to make sure that you use a very high shutter speed so that the motion blur is highly reduced, making Twixter a lot more effective when making it slow motion. We're going to go ahead and go into the composition settings here and making the duration much longer so that when we slow the footage down, it still all fits within the composition. We're going to go ahead and right click on the footage, go to time, time stretch, and stretch it by a factor of 250. This is going to stretch the clip to 2.5 times the length. It's going to duplicate one frame into 2.5 frames. So it's 2.5 times as long and playing back at about 40% of the real time. Since we shot it in 60 frames per second, it's going to still look pretty smooth because our eye is used to seeing 24 frames per second, which is the standard for film. We're going to go ahead and move to a different clip actually to do the actual editing in. So this clip looks pretty good because of the high contrast in his feet compared to the background. So we're going to take the clip and bring it into a new composition. And then we're going to select a new layer and make a new solid. Hit OK. We're going to apply the Twixter Pro to this new solid. We're going to change the input frame rate to 23.967 frames per second. Let's go to the color source and change it to our source file, which in this case is Water Twixter. We're going to make the speed 10, which will bring it to 1500 frames per second. We're going to change the frame interpretation to motion weighted blend. And then we're going to change the warping to inverse with smart blend. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results and see what we've got so far. We're going to render out the RAM preview. It looks pretty good. We can see a little bit of warping as the foot gets closer to the water. There's a few ways that we can minimize this warping. We're going to look at some masking with the blur, and then we're also going to look at some color correction to help out our final export. So let's go ahead and get in here. What Twixter basically does is makes its own unique frames from the frames you give it. So what we have to do is make sure that the frames that it's giving us are realistic frames and that there is little amount as warp as possible. So we're going to go into the effects and go to our output control, go to the speed. What we're going to do is ramp the speed here so that it actually goes past the warp frames. If you've ever seen 300, it'll be a similar effect where the speed ramps from slow motion to fast back to slow. So what we're going to do is keyframe the speed here and then set another keyframe past the point of warping. We can see here that it's pretty bad when he enters the water, but after a couple of frames, it starts to look a lot better. So we set another keyframe there because that's where we want to return back to the slow motion. So we're going to put back into our speed 10. So basically what it's doing is starting off playing at one-tenth of the original composition speed then it speeds up to about 500 percent of the original composition speed and then slows down we're going to change these keyframes to keyframe assistant easy ease making them ramp a little bit more smoothly very nice we're going to render this out Not too bad. We can see that we've ramped past the point of distortion here. Another way of removing distortion is adding a new adjustment layer on which we're going to put a soft blur. So let's type in fast blur here, add it to our adjustment layer. We're going to make it about six, five or six, add that to our adjustment layer. Then we're going to mask out part of the adjustment layer by hitting the G button which is a shortcut for masking, and that will apply the blur to only part of the image. You're going to want to make this kind of random so that it looks more natural. 
then we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe to the mask path so that we can change the part of the image that is being blurred out. So his feet go down a little bit more, so we're going to move that mask down to where his feet are and where the splash begins and where most of our warping occurs. Move that around a little bit, make it a little bit more random. And that will be pretty good right there, just a few minor adjustments. Um, obviously every shot is different, so make sure and mask out the parts in your shot that you see most of the distortion and warping occurring. Let's go ahead and, s and bring out the feather so that the blur isn't so obvious. And then lastly, we're going to add a new adjustment layer and do some color correction to the shot. So go ahead and type in curves and apply that to your new adjustment layer. And what we're going to do is make the darks a little bit darker, the brights a little bit brighter, kind of hide some of the, the warping that's going on. So set keyframes at your lows, mids, and highs. Bring the darks a little bit farther down. This just makes the shot look a lot better also. bring up those brights and that looks pretty good right there. So we're going to go ahead and render out this last shot and um, yeah that looks great. So this has been a tutorial by Visual Effects Bro. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to comment or message me with any questions that you have.